work on that later. Okay. I did forget it. Okay. I gotta get one thing and then we'll be good to go. Alrighty, what's up sons, it's Blind Rodden with Son of Attack once again. I'm doing a little bit of a off the bike start to the vlog today because, uh, well, new bike. It's a little dirty. Uh, I've already put a couple hundred miles on it. I'm getting used to it so I felt like we could moto vlog. Um, this is a 2014, brand new 2014. <laughs> is that that's the way they, that's the joke right uh brand new 2014 <laughs> uh yamaha fz09 so yes yeah, the triple look at them triples them, them triple headers coming off uh i traded the sb650 in for it and man it's a pretty big upgrade i'll give you guys some of my first impressions and stuff such on it as we ride to work today um it is it is a beast um now this one in particular did come with the frame sliders already installed it does have an elka i think it's elka stage four shock uh so the rear is much better um i did get the advantage of somebody already putting shorty levers on it uh, they did have a windshield, and it looks like they fucked this part up, so it was broken. You know, brand new 2014. I'll have to get that fixed. The part bugs the shit out of me. Um, and uh, I'm getting used to it, like I said. So, so, got the dealer tag on it still. Well, let's let's take it for a ride. See you guys in a second. Alrighty, so good morning, sons. I'm sure you saw the intro there. Uh, so like I said, this is the 2014 FZ09, so not a brand new one, not the MT. Uh, basically the same motor though, other than I know, and we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, was that this did get a kind of a mid, a mid-gen reflash on the ECU, so you could take it into the Yamaha dealer and get it reflashed. Now you may ask why is that? Well. That's primarily due to the fact that the throttle is a touchy son bitch. So uh, if you are going to pick up an FZ09, if it is going to be a 2014, um, make sure that the that you either take it into the Yamaha dealer if you're buying it used off of someone else, or that when you are getting it at the Yamaha dealer that you ask about the reflash for the throttle, because it is, even with, the flash or how I understand it and I'll have to look up some more information from you guys but even with that though yeah the throttle is touchy um, if you are expecting a docile throttle um, or something smooth I would say in traffic this is one of the touchiest I've, I've ever ridden now to give you guys some background on me, I was a motorcycle mechanic for seven years. Um, I started school at, what was it, at 19, 19 I believe. Um, and then I raced motocross growing up, so I raced uh, dirt bikes. Oh my god, Woo! alright, scary, almost hit a fawn, dear lord. I think we would have been fine stopping power. So, um, I picked up this bike because I wanted a commuter that still had the power of a sport bike. And I think that's why a lot of people pick these up. Um, it's a very powerful motor around, a, and I say very, very powerful for the seating position. 
Obviously this is one step below the FZ10, which is basically a dumbed down R1. Uh, this one stands apart from the rest though, purely because of the motor, which is like we mentioned earlier, that triple. And uh, I think I would, I would rather say I have a triple than a dumbed down R1, I suppose. <laughs> But the seating position, et cetera, on the FZ10 is very similar to this as well. All right, so there's not really a lot of room to really open anything up for you guys at all. And I think it will be a while before I can, but maybe we'll get some on the way home. So let's talk about the rest of the bike, I suppose. Handlebars are are on the thicker side but yes they are like dirt bars you can order the bars uh, pretty much any dirt bars you want to throw on here you can do i do know that they also have um, clip on options if you guys want to replace that upper triple tree which is this piece right here you can replace that and then throw some clip ons if you want a more aggressive styling and, and leaned over the handlebars some more um, which kind of almost defeats the purpose of the bike, so I won't purposely, I won't personally be doing that. Alright, so we'll give you a quick, what, a quick fourth gear run? Or a third, top of third, here we go. Um, woo! I was pretty much with no clutch or throttle control and uh, it definitely gets up and goes. So getting off the highway so I can talk to you sexy beasts a little bit more. I do have a, uh, a dead cat on this mic. It itches my nose and my lip but I'm hoping it gets us better audio quality. We'll figure that out later. Um, but as always, you kind of got to take the, the off-roads when vlogging to be able to talk to you all. Um, so we've gone over pretty much everything on this bike. Um, it has three modes. Uh, the mode button is over here on the handlebar. Swapping through them, you have A, B, and Standard. And uh, basically, you have a super aggressive mode. You have more of a streetable mode and then the standard. It always defaults back to standard. Um, so one of my complaints there would be that it should save the last setting you were on when you shut the bike off. Um, that would be beneficial. Unfortunately, it does not do that. So I don't know. Either way. Now, as far as the LCD... I'm able to see it pretty much through the tinted visor even with the clouds down it's bright enough to stay up there even in the high sunlight um, which I have ridden in a little bit so far and it's pretty basic you have your gear indicator your mode indicator and then of course you have your speed and your tack the interesting thing is there is a little light that comes on over here <laughs> And it's it, when you're just cruising, it'll tell you like if you're in eco mode or not. Um, I'm assuming that means I'm getting better gas mileage. Unfortunately, that light never stays on, so I don't know what that would be. Now, on the SV650, um, if you're looking, well, obviously, if you're looking for gas mileage, you're going to want to get something different than this. I don't even know what the gas mileage is, but I'll throw it up on the screen for you. That's not really the reason you purchase this I guess still better than the car if you're just kind of cruising 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 uh, now the controls are interesting um, they are basic Jap controls uh, anybody that's ridden any Jap bike you're gonna kind of feel at home except for the horn so they put the horn like up to the right above the indicator and it's really hard to hit like you have to slide your hand all the way into the grip for me uh to be able to hit it and for comparison galaxy s8 here's my thumb length 
So a little over half of the Galaxy S8. I don't have short thumbs, okay? I had to buy extra large gloves just so my thumbs would fit because they always hit the tip of the glove. Tip of the glove. So horn location is pretty bad. Um, it's not easy to get to. And that's kind of annoying because really on a street bike, but you want to be able to get to your horn pretty quickly and easily and and that's when I, I've actually when I first got the bike all I did was practice like sitting here and then getting to the horn right and uh, I can get to it almost from muscle memory but not like pretty much any other bike I've ever ridden horn I can get to from muscle memory no problem and this one uh, throws me off. I don't know what other bikes have the horn there. I'm sure there are some, but especially now that Yamaha is running it on here, but not a big fan. Not a big fan at all um, of that in particular. But of course, I could probably find some different controls. Your bright indicator is on the left index finger. Super easy to get to for flashing, for passing, etc pretty awesome and then the bright uh, on and off all the way is, is right there on that left side too pretty easy to get to no problems as far as that goes it's, it's odd because it's easier to get to than the horn now on the SV with the controls it, I would always accidentally hit the the brights and on here I don't really have that problem anymore um, and then your start, it doesn't have the auto start. Um, a lot of the beginner stuff that was on the SV is not here. I know I'm comparing it to the SV, sort of, but the SV, that's only because the S, F, F, SV was the, the last bike I had. So it's not really the same at all. I, I think if you're looking at this, then you're probably looking at maybe a Triumph Speed Triple. Um which would be a little bit more sporty not as sit up as this would be or maybe like my personal favorite would be something like the Super Duke um, over this uh, in Texas we don't have a lot of KTM dealers it looks like every all of them in San Antonio have pretty much shut down I found a couple Super Dukes like way far north and compared to even like California prices for the Super Dukes uh, Texas is significantly more expensive so um, unfortunately KTM's are not going to be something I'm looking into uh, even though I love them and I would really like either the Super Duke or the Duke 890 I think it's the Duke 890 yeah one of those two would be awesome this is a good replacement for that though I mean not as sleek obviously with the gas tank this gas tanks definitely a little bit more uh, sport bike I don't like the look of it from the, the top down perspective. It's pretty fat. Like, it's a big booty. It is a big booty. Um, so I bought this bike with 2,200 miles on it. It does appear that whoever had it before me um, was trying to purchase all the things to make it less scary from what I can tell hi right, there goes a nice little twin um, so <laughs> they obviously purchased the frame sliders they're the official Yamaha frame sliders they have the axle sliders installed on it and um, I don't know it's interesting so they also did the rear shock which is like I don't know even uh, like a well-priced rear shock which I don't think these Elkas are if I'm even saying that right I don't know I tried looking this particular one up I couldn't find it similar ones um, I could find it but I couldn't find one for like sale that wasn't stupid expensive um, but they're gonna be between eight hundred and twelve hundred dollars somewhere around there just really interesting then only 2200 miles on it for a 2014 um, now I did read that you can actually pick these up quite uh, frequently with that kind of mileage on them 
because I guess people expected them to be a more of a beginner bike, which they are definitely not. From the twitchy throttle to just the sheer amount of horsepower and the upright seating position, uh, wheeling this thing is what I would call accidentally easy. Meaning that like if you, if you get on it in first or second, the front's going to come up period like just it's gonna and then I haven't even tried a clutch wheelie I've only done power wheelies not very high ones because I'm still trying to get used to the throttle control and all that on this bike um, but yeah it just it'll pop it right up just from power wheelies and so if you're looking for a wheelie bike, this seems to be the one to get. I think most of the internet agrees with me on that one. And uh, I don't know. It's funny. So I did see that uh, this bike had about 2,000 miles on it. My SV had about 2,000 miles on it. And I took it in. I was laughing with the guys. I was like, man, this bike still doesn't even have the yellow line still on the front tire. Um, it's gotten worn off in 2,000 miles and my SV had actually when I traded in a little bit more miles than this one did on it I want to say like 2300 something I'm at 2415 now and it didn't it still had the yellow line I don't know how that happened I don't know uh, just funny stories um, keeping that front wheel light now, I haven't gotten a chance to take this out into twisties for an extended period of time. On my way back from Austin, I did skip 35 and take some twisties all the way home. And um, I didn't get on it super aggressively. So no peg dragging yet. Uh, it does feel very light and very nimble. For a 400 pound bike, it's very flickable. I wouldn't say obviously as flickable as the SV650 was. I don't think it would be, and I need to go, hopefully I'll get my hands on a KTM Duke of some sort at some point, but not going to be as flickable as that, I'm assuming. And then, and like I said, assuming, which I could make an ass out of me and you right here, and I understand that because I haven't ridden that one. Um, and not as flickable as maybe, like, not maybe, definitely not as flickable as any, like, Supermoto. But at the same time, you're getting three cylinders uh, just under 900 cc and just more torque than you can shake a stick at man it's just insane um, and just kind of rolling on it there like that's not even it's just ready to come up it's crazy so that's where we're at with the, the brand new 2014 <laughs> FZ09. Oh, front brake soft, by the way. Super soft. And I checked with them on that before uh, I got it. We'll need to find, figure out a, a brake upgrade. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Brap, brap.